Okay. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavallabha Kiri Vardhari Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Kiri Vardhari Nyashura Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yamana Tiravana Chari Yamana Tiravana Chari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Mishnupad Paramahansa his divine grace, Shila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai. Iskan BBT founder of Charja, Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Jai O Mishnupad Paramahansa Paravijaka Charja, Ashto Tarita Shri Srimad, His divine grace, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Kijai. Ananda Koti Vaishnavinda Kijai. Nama Charja Shila Haridas Thako Kijai. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Samaveda Bhaktivinda ki jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Hare Krishna. Oh, here we go. All right. What happened? Oh, the floor. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm just wrestling with my phone. It's locked up. All right. I get we're on page uh, 571, text 6. Okay. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this fourth day of November 2024 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 14, the Three Modes of Material Nature, Text 6 on page 571. Tatra Satvam Nirmalatvat Prakashakam Anamayam Sukasangena Badnati Jnana Sangena Shanaga Tatta Sattvam Nirmalatvat Prakashakam Anamayam Sukasangena Badnati Jnana Sangena Chanaga Tatta Sattvam Nirmalatvat Prakashaka Manamayam Sukha Sangena Bodhnati Jnana Sangena Chanaga Tatta Sattvam Nirmalatvat Prakashaka Manamayam Sukha Sangena Bodhnati Jnana Sangena Chanaga Tattva Sattvam Nirmalatvat Prakashaka Manamayam Sukha Sangena Bodhnati Jnana Sangena Chanaga Tattva Sattvam Nirmalatvat Prakashaka Manamayam Sukha Sangena Bodhnati Jnana Sangena Chanaga Anyone online? Tattva Sattvam Nirmalatvat Prakashakam Anamayam Sukha Sangena Badnati Gyana Sangena Chanaga Word by words, Tattva there, Sattvam, the mode of goodness, Nirmalatvat, being purest in the material world, Prakashakam, illuminating, Anamayam, without any sinful reaction. Sukha, with happiness, sangena, by association, bodhnati, conditions. Jnana, with knowledge, sangena, by association, cha, also, anagha, O sinless one. Translation. Lord Krishna says to Arjun, O sinless one, the mode of goodness, being purer than the others, is illuminating, and it frees one from all sinful reactions. Those situated in that mode become conditioned by a sense of happiness and knowledge. Purport. The living entities conditioned by material nature are of various types. One is happy, another is very active, and another is helpless. All these types of psychological manifestations are causes of the entity's conditioned status in nature. How they are differently conditioned is explained in this section of the Bhagavad Gita. The mode of goodness is first considered. The effect of developing the mode of goodness in the material world is that one becomes wiser than those otherwise conditioned. A man in the mode of goodness is not so much affected by material miseries, and he has a sense of advancement in material knowledge. <coughs> Excuse me. The representative type is the Brahman, who is supposed to be situated in the mode of goodness. 
this, this sense of happiness is due to understanding that in the mode of goodness, one is more or less free from sinful reactions. Actually, in the, in the Vedic literature, it is said that the mode of goodness means greater knowledge and a greater sense of happiness. Time out. Sorry. That helps. Okay. So, uh, the last paragraph? No. Okay. The difficulty here is that when a living entity is situated in the mode of goodness, he becomes conditioned to feel that he is advanced, advanced in knowledge and is better than others. In this way, he becomes conditioned. The best examples are the scientist and the philosopher. Each is very proud of his knowledge, and because they generally improve their living conditions, they feel a sort of material happiness. This sense of advanced happiness in conditioned life makes them bound by the mode of goodness of material nature. As such, they are attracted toward working in the mode of goodness, and as long as they have an attraction for working in that way, they have to take some type of body in the modes of nature. Thus, there is no likelihood of liberation or of being transferred to the spiritual world. Repeatedly, one may become a philosopher, a scientist, or a poet, and repeatedly become entangled in the same disadvantages of birth and death. But, due to the illusion of material energy, one thinks that that sort of life is pleasant. Om jnana timarandasya jnana shalakaya chokshu un militam mena tasmai shri guruve namaha. I was, I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. This is a simplex succession. So this chapter is entitled The Three Modes of Material Nature. Now, after a short introduction, Krishna is starting to explain the different modes one by one. And it's interesting that the mode of goodness, Hare Krishna, welcome. Please take a book, you can read the book. We're on page uh, 571, 572, just read text number six. So the mode of goodness, of course it's good, otherwise we wouldn't say goodness, but it's not spiritually good by nature. It's a good uh, platform to be on uh, in sadhana bhakti. And that's why you find in the, in the temple, those who want to live in the temple, uh, cleanliness is there, regularity, of course, uh, eating pure food, not only uh, no meat, fish, or eggs, but also offered to the Lord. Um, and, the, and the mode of goodness is, uh, it, it, those who are in the mode of goodness and practice Krishna consciousness will make rapid advancement. Those who are in the lower modes and practice Krishna consciousness, if they're, if they're uh, determine will rise up to the mode of goodness, and then they'll make more uh, they'll make more rapid spiritual advancement. But if it's just a material mode of goodness, that is not inherently spiritual. It means, as Prabhupada says, says here, you'll be interested in philosophy. You uh, you may develop um, nice material qualities like uh, kindness and and do charity work and things like that. But without that understanding of that we've got in the, until now, as we're reading in, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, that who, who am I, why am I suffering, who is God, what's the relationship? If those questions don't arise, then uh, you can easily sink down into the mode of passion. And we'll read uh, uh, after uh, a few verses how in ordinary people, these modes are often warring between each other. You'll be in the mode of goodness today, but then you get cut off in, on, on the highway and suddenly you're in the mode of ignorance, bad passion. You know, and you collect your, your thoughts, you know. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's material. These are material modes. Material mode of goodness, material of passion, material mode of ignorance. But it's important to, to understand how they work and what the symptoms are. Because I always like to go back to text 22 of the previous chapter. I believe it's 22. Purushak pukatisto hi bhunkte pukati chan gunan karanang gurusangosya sadasadyoni janmasu. This is on page 553. 
The living entity in material nature that follows the ways of life, experiencing the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with that material nature. Thus he meets with good and evil among various species. So the, 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 the uh, cause of his destiny, whether he's born in a good or, good or bad birth, you know, an animal birth or even a low human birth, is the, how he associates with the modes of nature. How he associates with the mode of nature. So our de the destiny is in our hands. And we'll, as we go through this chapter 14 and the more details on these modes of nature, you'll find at near the end of the chapter, well, Arjun asks, well, can you describe the, the characteristics of one who's, who's transcending the modes of nature and how one transcends? That's the whole point of this. <laughs> in other words, you, how, the, the, the characteristics we can recognize in ourselves. Oh, I, I find myself now getting more and more uh, in, the, in the mode of passion because I'm, I'm more affected by the desire for material happiness and I'm easily angered and I know that that's now the mode of ignorance and this is dangerous because then that means I'll take another birth. So with that knowledge, then you do the things to cultivate the mode of goodness and the transcend, to transcend them all. And, and that's nicely explained at the end of this chapter. It's basically devotional service. Mamchi yoga bichalina, bhakti yoga na sevate, sagunan samati taitan, brahma buyaya kalpate. This is, the, this is the, the answer to the question of Arjun, how does one transcend? By devotional service, that's un, unceasing. Avdhyabhicharini bhakti, it's not failing in any circumstance. Then one can transcend the modes of nature and become fixed in the Brahman platform, which is transcendental to all the modes. And in that Brahman platform, we learn later, then one attains to bhakti, and you go on your way back to God. So seeing how these modes in, in our daily life, as we observe our environment, and also we observe ourselves and those around us, we can see, oh, this, this person is now tending toward the mode of passion, mode of ignorance. And you can see how the, the whole world is working on that basis. And these lower species, uh, they're all covered by very thick you know, modes of passion and ignorance. What is a tree? Is a living entity in there. But, I mean, if you, if you, was, if you had uh, memory and, and sense, of course, we just read about Nalakuva and Manigriva, they were like 36,000 years in those tree bodies, in Krishna's, eventually will become Krishna's backyard, and they had, they, they had their memory. This was part of the, the blessing curse. This was part of the blessing part, that they could remember why they were trees. And, <clears throat> of course, the best part of it all was that Krishna would tear them down, liberate them from those bodies, and by that time they'd be purified and they'd be devotees. <coughs> <coughs> but ordinary trees, they don't have that. They're, they're practically unconscious. If they, if they were, can you imagine if, you were, if, if they were just some ordinary human consciousness in a tree body, how unbearable that would be? You know, remembering and, and regretting why I did, but, you know, no, it doesn't work that way. But, but you can see, as you, as you read through this chapter, and you can see uh, human beings in different modes of nature, obviously, but also these animals and then the insects and things, how they're so much covered by the mode of ignorance, and, and, uh, which is really tragic, you know, because these are, here's these living entities who are just like us. They're by nature, Satchitananda, Vigraha in the spiritual world, and they've done, they come down to this platform, and then as human beings, and more, and then they're covered now, and then gradually, gradually, gradually coming up. So, uh, if you understand the world that way, you say, okay, no more. I don't want to go back down there again. You know, I don't even want to come back as a human being. Let me, let me transcend these modes of nature. As help as many as others to also learn about Krishna consciousness, practice Krishna consciousness, and then let's return back to God. Now, if you're really super advanced, you say, I don't care if I go back to God. I just want to stay as a servant of the Lord. Let me keep preaching in this world. I'm not like that. I don't know about you. <laughs> but, but certainly uh, hearing these things and understanding how the world is working is, is essential. Is essential for... Uh, beginning to wake up from the long, let's face it, long nightmare of material life in this material world and seeing the path out and being enlivened to follow it 
and uh, with our great tool of the Hare Krishna Mantra and the other practices of devotional service, and at the same time awakening our you know, compassion for others, be, having experienced it, material life ourselves, and then saying, oh, let me give people a chance to uh, read these books and come to the festivals and you know, be Krishna conscious. And that's how we got here. Somebody took that trouble, probably primarily, but his representatives who reached out and, and uh, somehow contacted us and found a receptive heart, you know. So let's go on with, unless there are any questions, what is the mode of goodness? And, uh, oops, now I'm back in chapter 13. Okay, so uh, 14, I'm sorry, I lost my place. So, text 7, right? Okay, mode of passion. Rajo ragatmakam vidhi. Trishna sanga samudbhavam. Tanna badnati kaunteya. Karma sanga in a dehinam. The mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings, O son of Kunti. And because of this, the embodied living entity is bound to material fruit of actions. Purport. The mode of passion is characterized by the attraction between man and woman. Woman has attraction for man, and man has attraction for woman. This is called the mode of passion. And when the mode of passion is increased, one develops the hankering for material enjoyment. He wants to enjoy sense gratification. For sense gratification, a man in the mode of passion wants some honor in society or in the nation, and he wants to have a happy family with nice children, wife, and house. These are the products of the mode of passion. As long as one is hankering after these things, he has to work very hard. Therefore, it is clearly stated here that he becomes associated with the fruits of his activities and thus becomes bound by such activities. In order to please his wife, children, and society, and to keep up his prestige, one has to work. Therefore, the whole material world is more or less in the mode of passion. Modern civilization is considered to be advanced in the standard of the mode of passion. Formerly, the advanced condition was considered to be in the mode of goodness. If there is no liberation for those in the mode of goodness, what to speak of those who are entangled in the mode of passion? Okay, one second. So, now the mode of passion, and we see uh, it's, it's characterized by very uh, strong hankerings, Krishna hankerings, uh, and then it then becomes bound. Each, each verse will describe what you're bound by, nibbhannati, nibbhannati. And here, this is, a, this is a classic, you know, we can see this all around us, the whole society, modern society, American society is built on the mode of passion. I often, I've, I've often thought that you know, psychology and psychiatry is aimed at bringing you from the mode of ignorance, which is characterized by the depression and, and inactivity and, right, and all these different things, to the mode of passion. And if, you're, if now, if you really want to you know, enjoy life and you want to work hard, oh, this is success, you know, thank, congratulations, we cured you. Where's the cure? <laughs> You can easily sink down again into the mode of ignorance, but you're bound. And if you die in the mode of passion, then those material hankerings, and especially in this age where you perform all kinds of sinful activities, you'll probably use the human form of life. So where is the success in that, you see? That just shows the ignorance of modern society. That, that even a, 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 li you know, a life of goodness, which is you know, contemplating at least your little philosophical, you know, uh, it seemed, uh, hey, don't you want to get ahead and get, get you know, no. But, uh, so this, this is Rajo Ragamangam Vidhi, Trishna Sangha Samudma. And this, this thirst, this uh, passion for enjoyment is, is the characteristic. And what did we learn in our favorite verse? Yehi Sansparjaja Boga, Dukhi Yona Yevate, Adyandamanta Kondeya Nateshu Ramate Buddha. Intelligent people do not take part in the pleasures that are due to the contact of the senses with their sense objects. O son of Kunti, such pleasures are the sources of all miseries. 
and they have a beginning and an end, and so the wise do not delight in them. Someone, someone who knows, you see, this is that you have to know there's a whole other platform of enjoyment, spiritual enjoyment, that doesn't have a beginning and an end. If, you, if, you, if you're able to keep you know, doing what you have to do to do that enjoyment, it's not based on the, on, on the, on the content of the senses with the sense objects, because that's obviously limited, because the senses are limited, they're material. So hankering for that is, is ultimately self-defeating. Because you die with that hankering, and that hankering brings you back. But because of all the, the, the activities you performed, probably some sinful, you may not have a human being, a human life again. You, 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 Prabhupada's favorite, you, know, you get to be born as a hog. And you'll have, you'll have really a lot of, much more chance for sex, and you can eat all kinds of wonderful, tasty things, which I won't mention. And uh, in this way, you're, I always like to say, in hog heaven. <laughs> Until you die, you know, and it's just, you get eaten, somebody says pork or whatever. But, it, but uh, of course, that's slinking down in the mode of ignorance. But one can get a body like that if you're simply uh, always uh, completely focused on material pleasures. You can definitely get a body like that. So this is, the, we, we don't want to, the motive passion is very prominent in, the, in this age, you know, as and motive passion and ignorance are, are very prominent. And uh, we, have to, we have to rise above them, and, and bhakti yoga allows you to do that if you follow the, pro, the process. By chanting Hare Krishna uh, seriously, even without any, any, any preliminaries, even if you're breaking the four regular principles, but somehow you're chanting Hare Krishna, uh, you're going to experience... Uh, a, a, a taste of transcendental pleasure. And that, if you're intelligent and you're fortunate, that will uh, inspire you to investigate the process. And investigate what basically means to associate, to come in, you know, to, to classes, or it, through some of the media, the media, such as, such as the books, you know, but there's also the, uh, so many sites online, you know, so many ki wonderful kirtans and everything. Uh, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the way out. Otherwise, if you don't know any of this and you're just, you know, w being described in one of these symptomatic ways, then you're trapped because there's no, it's, 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 it's not a material uh, solution. There's no, no, no material solution to these problems. It has to be a spiritual solution based on the soul. Otherwise, it's all temporary. You know, it looks like a solution. Duke Alshadam, this one, another one of my favorite verses you probably heard. Pallad Maharaj is praying to Lord Nishingadev, and he's giving so many wonderful instructions in those prayers. So one of his verses, one of my all-time favorites, Yasmat priya priyava yoga sa yoga janma shoka agnina sakalayona shadayamana Duke Alshadam tadapi dukkam adhadhyaham so he's, he's given it in, in three lines, he's giving a, a, a perfect analysis of material life. So this, this Sanskrit is such a wonderful language. Yasmat, from, from this, priya, priya, viyoga, sa yoga. So priya means those things dear to you. Basically, your life, your health, your wealth, whatever you may have, you know. Uh, that that you you re, you're attached to, you know, and they they inevitably sooner or later get taken from you, such as your health, just by passage of time. Eventually, you get old and you, know, you lose your health. Oh, the tragic, you know. I lost my health. I can't do what I used to do when I was forty, even fifty. Oh, if only I was sixty again, I could you know go hiking now. My knees or I can't do anything. Whatever, right? This is classic. So you're losing. So things that are dear to you, or more tragically, a death of a child, or you know, uh, whatever may may be, there's a million different things. So this is a source of uh, sh the fire of lamentation, shok agnina, shok is fire. And the other thing that we're all experiences, that those things which are abominable to you are forced upon you, right? The dear things are ripped away, and the horrible things are forced on you. Like he was sitting here. You know, at any moment, well, this is what I, when I came here, I was uh, con very conscious of this. Yeah, there can be an earthquake, right? Hare Krishna. And uh, this whole building could collapse on our heads. You know, suddenly, 
Ah! Right? So that's, that's another, that, that's something that's not dear at all. It's abominable that's forced upon you. An example, and there's a million examples. The earthquake could be out in the ocean and we get a tsunami and it gets very wet. Hare Krishna, welcome. To have a seat, you can sit on a chair or on the bench or even on the floor. But just make sure you get a book, though. And we are on page 572. So, uh, so to finish with the verse, so yasmat priya priya yoga sa yoga janma, the giving birth. This is uh, an analysis of what brings misery in this world. Uh, and it's like the, uh, the fire of lamentation, shoka agnina. So, the, so there's two things. One is the things that you treasure, that are most close to you, uh, get taken away or damaged your body. You get an accident, suddenly you, can hardly, you can't walk anymore. You know, it's just, oh, oh, woe is me. Uh, and the things that, are, you, that the, you, you hate are forced upon you. Why is there road rage? Because, of, you know, I'm driving nicely, I've got the car, I'm going to work, and suddenly someone stops on the roadway or they cut me off, you know, and they impede my, my you know, my, my nice passage has been stopped. So the things that, anyway, so, shok as sakala yonushu, not just in human life, but in every life. Whether it could be a dog, you know, and you have certain things that, uh, that everything is going all right, but suddenly something happens, you can't go over there anymore. They, you move, all the places I used to go and visit are now gone, I have to get, you know, whatever, you know. So in human life especially, we have remedies for these miseries, right? We have, uh, you know, for, just like the coal, I put on the heat, you know, now it's getting too warm, you know, same thing. But, uh, but that's a big thing. When we put in the heat and, and, and the air conditioning in this room, oh, you know, we've upgraded greatly, you know. <laughs> but the, but the, 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 the Duke Aushadam, the remedy for the misery, can itself become another misery. Duke Aushadam, tadabi dukkam. I like to give the example, the same, if you heard this before. I don't know if they still have a magazine. Is Reader's Digest still around? It was, I don't see any. It's old, it's passe. Anyway, I, I, I'm also old, so I know about Reader's Digest. So I remember reading this. I was in the movement. I was, in, I was at the laundromat. They used to pile them up there. Okay, let's see. So I happened to open up to an advertisement for an antidepressant, because a lot of depression, you know. And they show the ideal scene. The lady, you know, is, is, is cavorting in the, in the field with her dog or something. She used to be depressed, but now she's, she's feeling okay, you know. And because she's taking XYZ remedy, you know. So you turn the page, and there's two pages of side effects. You know, watch out, it can damage your kidneys, ah, da, 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 you know, whatever. <laughs> I remember that this was in another instance, uh, this, uh, certain rem you know, a certain medicine, and one of the, one of the side effects was death. Oh, yeah, great, you know. <laughs> but no, it's only 1% of the people, so it's good you know. so that, so that, but, but think of it more along, like, the 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 uh, it, the, the um, interstate highway system. I don't know if you know about that. Historically, there was Eisenhower who built that a trillion dollars to all these interstate highways, you know, to enable people to drive from California to New York, you know, and everything. It's a big deal. So that was a lot of money spent, and you know, a lot of work, and so then we we have it. It's, it's great, you know. But that facilitated, a lot of it was paid for and, you know, by, by the big oil companies and the big car companies to, you know, have it built. At, rather than trains, which would be much more convenient and cheaper, you know, everything has got to, you got to drive there. So, but now what do we got? Okay, everyone's got his car, you know, we're driving, 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 driving. Whoa, what about this? What is this, all this? There's, uh, there's greenhouse gases? You mean, uh, you, you know? So that's all coming from that and, and the other. And, and have you noticed that this has been on for, for some 25 years or more? They've had meetings, okay, we're all going to do this, right? The, 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 we're going to decrease the, the. But everyone thinking, no, we, we can't do that. Our whole economy is built on this, you know. So we, we'll keep doing what we're doing. The rest of the countries will do that and then we'll benefit. No, it doesn't work that way. And so they haven't done anything. So now the. Uh, I don't know if you know, I forget what it's called, maybe you know. There's, there's, a, there's a, a big circulation system in the ocean. 
It goes up from the Gulf of Mexico, uh, uh, no, the Gulf Stream, and across the ocean and brings warm water from the equator up to around where, you, where the UK is. You know, if you look at the, I think longitude is the one north south, right? Like uh, London is about the same longitude as Moscow. But Moscow gets really cold, right? I mean, it's, it, it, Russia, they get winter, you know, big heavy winter. And it's not so bad in UK because of this, uh, this uh, medianal thing. And it's good. Now, with the heating of the oceans, they're afraid that's going to stop. And one thing it's going to really affect is the monsoon in India. If that doesn't come, what happens? Mass death, right? You know, or the heat builds up and the, all the glaciers, you know, come down. So this is all a result of anthropogenic climate change. I hope you all believe in that. You know what it means. Human cause is not an accident, you know. So that's a, that's a big example of what Pallad is talking about. All right, we got all these cars, you know, and we can burn all this and we burn it. And everyone's, oh, we're much more advanced. But then the back, the back side is that it causes, uh, this, is where, this is where the Adi Daivik and the Adi, Adi Baudic miseries are mix up. Is it, if it's anthropogenic, I don't know if you know the terminology, there's three categories of miseries. Because in our philosophy, we really want to know why we're suffering, and then we can know how to get out of it. So if you think about it, uh, Adi, Adi, Adi Baltic miseries means miseries caused by other living beings, often by human beings. Probably, but others, I mean, probably gives the example of bed bugs. You know, I mean, I've, I've been fortunate to avoid that this lifetime. But, uh, <laughs> so, but I mean, what was this pandemic? There was, you know, there was that little virus, you know, and everyone, <laughs> it was a big misery, you know, just the fear and paranoia. We had a lot of people come and join at that time. Because suddenly, it's not theoretical anymore. You know, you go into the grocery store and you pick up this fatal disease. So, so okay, let's check out this Hare Krishna. Anyway. So, uh, Adi, Adi Baltic and Adi Daivik. Adi Daivik are the big hurricanes that have come, you see. And uh, the earthquakes and all, all, all the kinds of things that, you know, natural disasters. Which, who, how can you avoid it, you know? And the Adi Atmic is that your own mind and body are giving you trouble. Now, there's, there's, there's uh, obviously some overlap here. As I gave the example, is it Adi Daivik or is it Adi Baltic? You got millions of people driving the cars, pouring out the, the, the greenhouse gases, causing the temperature to go up. And now it's, it's uh, you know, three months of plus 100 degrees weather in Phoenix, or 110 degrees. This was last year. I, don't, I think it's a little cooler this year. But... Uh, it's, it's, it's just the heat itself, it's killing people, you know, and, and animals. What to speak of what it does to the oceans, causing the hurricanes to be more, you know, severe. We just had, you know, two big ones hit uh, uh, Florida and North Carolina and everything. So this, that's material life. And it's, it's a result of this mode of passion. Because all this buildup of industry and everything, it's all a result of the mode of passion. Oh, we can, you know, we can make more, so much money. Oh, he has millions of dollars. I can do that too. You know, let me go and then play the stock market hall. Oh, now I can really enjoy and buy this, buy that, buy a yacht, do this. You know. It's insane. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're getting older, right? <laughs> whether, you're, whether you're Bezos or some guy, in the, poor guy in the street pushing a, a handcart, uh, you're both heading for old age, disease, and death, you know? And you may, well, the rich may put it off a little longer, you know, but it's still coming, and you're going to lose everything. Mitchu sava haras chaham. Krishna says in the 10th chapter, this is very important. As death, I take everything away from everyone. You see? So the, the atheists will see me at the time of death as all-powerful. They won't be able to do anything. The devotees will see Krishna. They say, take the body, I don't care about everything. Go back to Godhead. So, so these, understanding how these modes of nation are, we just did their mode of, of goodness. You're also conditioned by that mode of peacefulness and happiness. And of course, the, all these desires, Trishna Sangha Samudvavam, is born out of uh, association with this, this, this hankering, you see, born out of that. And it, and it binds you with karma, karma sangena. All these food of activities, you're bound up by that because it, it has an effect on the subtle body. When you enjoy something, 
It plants the desire seed in your mind to enjoy it again. Why not? You see? So now, as you go through life, you've got all these desire seeds in your mind. You know, some, some that frustrated you can't enjoy, others you can. You see? But those, when you leave the body, all of those unfulfilled desires, plus your karma, you know, that's, what, that's the determining factor. And at that point, you can't do anything about it. You know? You're stuck with the mentality that you developed, and that's going to be it. So therefore, while we have a choice, we can use our intelligence to say, no, ne let me not cultivate that desire. Let me cultivate this wholesome desire, spiritual desire. And, and ultimately, if one is completely free from any material hankering, and is simply hankering to serve God, serve Krishna, think of Krishna, glorify him, serve him, and help others, and, and is relishing happiness at every moment, you can't do that with material uh, sense gratification. You, you're hankering, 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 and then if you can afford it, you actually experience it. Oh, now I'm enjoying. Oh, now it's over? Oh, all right. Oh, you know, maybe I'll do it again tomorrow. Right? It's like that. <laughs> and, always, you know, and, and so it, it's, it's back to our favorite verse. Yeah, he sings Bhajita Boga Dukkha Yona Evate, that the, mat the enjoyments of, the materi of, of material happiness are the very sources of your misery. Miseries which are, you know, the threefold misery I describe, but the four basic miseries. Birth, old age, disease, and death. And then start over again. Death is not the end. You will learn that's the first lesson. That's the A of the ABCs. What is that? Everybody, everybody dies. I made a little, a little uh, motto, or you know, what do you call it? Aphorism. Every single body dies. So now that you know the grammar, Every body dies. Nobody dies. Wake up, wake up, and open your eyes. You're not that body, you're a pure spirit soul. Chant the holy name and attain life's goal. That's the basis of the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> but that, that lesson, understanding you're not the body, therefore all the urgings and the pushings of the body, you have to learn how to, how to control them and curb them. And, my favorite word, sublimate those desires into desires to serve God. And why, how come, it, what about me? Why do I have to serve God? You're part and parcel of God. That's the point. <laughs> he is Ananda Mayo Vyasat. This is a Vedanta Sutra, a little sutra's aphorism. Ananda Mayo, he's always full of Ananda. Wouldn't you be if you were God? Would you say, no, no, I went a little ups and downs, you know, let me get depressed a little bit. No. I want to be happy all the time. But if you try to do that in the material body, it's impossible. Because the body is a machine, it wears out. It's not fun. But you can do it on the spiritual level. The great, the great uh, devotees, they're always blissful. There's a nice verse about the, uh, some, one of, you know, six of our great uh, acharyas called the six Goswamis, and the first the disciples of Lord Chaitanya. So uh, three of them especially, they were, they were millionaires, multi-millionaires today, billionaires. When one of them cashed out, he, he renounced, he sold everything, and he had a big boatload of gold. You know how much that would be worth today? Billions and billions of dollars. But he was completely detached. He gave half of it to the Brahmins and the Vaishnavs. He gave a quarter of it to his relatives, because Prabhupada says, because they expect something, they cause a lot of trouble. And then the remainder he saved for emergencies. And it turned out he needed it, because his brother was in, was in jail. The, 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 uh, the Nawab, the king, had a jail. He was the prime minister. He said, you can't do this. You can't quit. You know, and he arrested him. Um, so he was waiting in jail. So he was able to bribe the jailer with that money, you know, and to, to get out. So they came from the, you know, the prime minister and the finance minister. They had so much money, influence, uh, aristocracy. But they were very learned scholars. They were actually uh, Saraswati Brahmins, you know. Anyway, so when they met Lord Chaitanya, Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Badayate, I offer my obeisances uh, um, to the most munificent avatar. Why? Because he's giving out the most valuable thing, which is Krishna Prema. Not just liberation. The, 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 the great devotees, they forget about liberation. <laughs> liberation is waiting at the door to serve me, you know. But the Krishna Prema, love for Krishna, that's the ticket back to Godhead. That, that, you, you, even before you leave the body, you'll have this sense of liberation. And then afterward, you go back to Godhead to resume 
your long forgotten and long lost relationship with Krishna, which is always there, but it's buried under all these modes of nature. So that's the, so here you have this wonderful verse. There's a wonderful poem, eight verse poem, written by uh, Sh Shunivasacharya about these six Goswamis. So one of them goes like this, describing three, Rupa and Sanatana and Raghunath Goswami especially. He was also he, the only son of multi-billionaire landowners. I offer my own obeisance to the six Goswamis, namely Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatana Goswami, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Gopa Bhatta Goswami, and Jiva Goswami. So those first three, he says, Tyaktva Turnam, as soon as they met Lord Chaitanya, they immediately renounced. They didn't say, well, let's think about it. You know, let's, we'll go back home and we'll check out. Maybe we'll just be. No, no, no. They realized the Turnam without wasting any time. Ashesha Mandalapati means endless uh, influence and aristocracy. They were in those circles. Gave it up at Tutchabat. Insignificant. You see? So what did they do? Budva, Dina Ganesha, they became uh, Dina Ganeshako. Uh, out of compassion for the dinas, the, the, uh, for us, for those who are ignorant and, and, and uh, needing uh, uh, instruction and example. Karunaya, out of mercy, compassion. Kopina kuntashrito. They came from those high platforms of material enjoyment, and they just put on the kopin, you know, a little wrapper for the loincloth, and they became mendicants in Vrindavan. And they, they didn't even, you know, build a hut or anything, nor did they have... Uh, a, a special tree that they lived under. They lived under a different tree each night, so they wouldn't get attracted to this particular tree. And, uh, well, what did they do? You know? Of course, they all wrote wonderful literatures that so on the basis of what, of what we're reading here. And, Gopi Bhavada Samatabda Lahali Kalalola Magno Again and again, they're diving into the nectar ocean of the pastimes and the relationships of Krishna with the gopis and things like that. They're experiencing that at every moment. And, and everything else they had given, tuchabha, it's insignificant. There's no attraction anymore. There's no attraction. You know, if there's no attraction, you're free. It's those, the, the, those, those ropes of desire, trishna, trishna samudrava, that keep us bound here. They're called the knots in the heart. So you cut those knots in the heart, you know, really by sublimating those material desires into the spiritual desires. So those, the, these, these uh, six Goswamis, they wrote many books, they built temples, they're really foundational for this movement, and they're all inspired by Lord Chaitanya. So that's, and, and the wonderful thing is we all have that. Everyone is qualified, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you, where you were born, how old you are, gender, don't, doesn't matter. If you're a human, if you're a living entity, is anyone in this room not a living entity? Okay. So you're all qualified, because you have agency, you have intelligence, you have senses, you have mind. And, and uh, the great gift that this, this, the, the Lord Chaitanya gave is Krishna Prema. How? There, by chanting that mantra. That's the main thing. No hard and fast rules. Unlike the Vedas, you can't go to chant the Vedas. You know, you're not a Brahmin, you can't even read them in India, you know. That's why there's such a revolutionary movement. Lord Chaitanya was taking the lowest, Jaga and Madai, and turning them into the highest, and the caste Brahmins said, you can't do that, that's revolutionary. No, because it, 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 that, that's the great advantage. For the Kali Yuga, this is a practical means. Not Ashtanga Yoga, I, you know, I tried that also, you know, meditating 15 minutes on Aum, and then, what time is it? Okay. <laughs> no. But luckily, I also had been exposed to Hare Krishna. So as I was driving the car, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hare. I'm working in the hospital and trying to, you know, foolishly trying to uh, cure my patients just by chanting Hare Krishna in my mind. So that's, but at least I was chanting, you know. <laughs> and that, it's so powerful, a, a, a process. There's no hard in nam nam akadi bahudani dasarva shaktis tatra pitani yamitak smadane nakala eta drishita vakripa bhagavan mamapi durda evamidrishamihajani nanuraga. Lord Chandanya is teaching us with eight verses about the holy name. Shik shashtaka, eight verses of instruction. And the third one is all, all about, the second one actually, is all about how 
Voce Tanya takes the role of someone who is, is just a neophyte and doesn't really develop any taste for the Holy Day. So he says, Krishna, Govinda, and Keshava too, your names have no end, and in each of them you have invested your potencies, leaving none out. Whenever we want, we could chant it without the slightest restriction of time or of place. O Lord, who can fathom your infinite grace, but I am so wretched, devoid of all shame, that I haven't developed a taste for your name. So then comes the essential verse, mo most essential in these, uh, how to develop that taste and keep it. Trinada bisuni chena, tarora bisahishnana, aman in aman adena, kirtaniya sadahari. More humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree. To think all praise belongs to others, none belongs to me. Such qualities attract the Lord to bless one with the power to chant his name incessantly until the final hour. And that's, that's uh, Lord, and uh, I forget who it was, Krishna's Kaviraj. He said, you should take this verse and, and, and string it around your neck. I mean, don't forget it. Because this, th those, those two ma new mantras, this is a mantra, the Hare Krishna mantra, and also this verse, these are also mantras. Uh, if you can adopt that means, then that opens the door for success. And it's, all right, I've kind of got a little bit off subject. Any questions on these two verses? Okay, so tomorrow we won't have a class. There's a special day tomorrow. It's Prabhupada's disappearance day. And so if you're really interested, we're going to have Pushpanjali at 12, but also we'll have in the evening a program starting at 5.30, and uh, devotees will read you know, their appreciations of Prabhupada. We'll have Pushpanjali and a Kirtan feast like that. So it's a very important day, much more because of that reason than the other reason that may be happening tomorrow I'm not even going to mention. So... Uh, we have a, a time for another little poem. So this is a poem I wrote. It's no Sanskrit. Uh, it's a, called The Fall and Redemption of the Soul. Where Krishna lives, felicity abounds with pure simplicity and loving sensibility, all serve him with humility. But when the living entity rejects his true identity and out of his stupidity surrenders to cupidity, he, le he, 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 <laughs> he loses all sagacity. And with an all capacity to understand reality, a curb is sensuality. Abandoning humility, he touts his own ability, forgetting his fragility and fortune's volatility. Immersed in asininity for what seems an infinity of lives devoid of piety, he suffers an anxiety till contact with God's devotee, perhaps of utmost brevity, awakens his affinity for words of the divinity. Perceiving the futility of all his imbecility, the soul regains his sanity and casts away his vanity. Endowed with new humility, he serves with all ability and growing spontaneity, his guru and the deity. Regaining his identity, the wayward living entity returns to the fraternity of Krishna for eternity. So, there you go. If you want any of the poetry, I have a whole, you know, PDF file. So you have, but you have to write me an email. Dravida108 at gmail. D-R-A-V-I-D-A 108. Okay, all glory to the Prabhupada. Now I'll have a nice kirtan, see the deities, and for those who are interested, prasadam. Adivo. And we'll resume on Wednesday with the mode of, mode of ignorance. Text 8, right?